Hi all, today we're going to learn about um, rotating uh, photos and elements. Um, I'm just going to practice uh, with a photo in this tutorial, um, but you can also rotate text in the same way. Uh, and it, uh, this is a lesson on using the transform tool. Now there are three ways um, that I know of that you can bring up the transform tool. The transform tool is going to be a menu bar up here at the top. And um, I, I want you to watch as I uh, click down and you're going to see that it appeared here at the top. Now, if I hover with my mouse over these boxes um, in the bounding box around the photo, if it's a straight arrow like this, um, I'm going to be able to resize my photo. However, if I can get it in the corner so it's this rounded arrow, that's going to be a rotating arrow and when I click down on it you'll see the bounding box comes up and now I want you to watch uh, this area here as I turn my photo and you'll see that the numbers change this is the uh, degrees of rotation uh, that are changing as I rotate my photo. So if I wanted to be exact, and I usually never am when I'm making my layouts, I could highlight this and manually type in a certain degree. Um, if you're wanting to turn it uh, 90 degrees, for instance, exactly um, sideways, uh, you could go in there to do that. Um, you can also uh, use these tools to rotate 90 degrees exactly. So I tend to use those tools here under the image drop down menu rotate to do my exact rotating um, rather than this method. But you can use whatever method you want to use if you're wanting to rotate something exactly and this certainly could be one. So this is how you rotate your photos, and, and when you get your photo where you like it, of course, accept it with the um, green check mark in Photoshop Elements 3. It's up here. I'm going to hit the Undo button. Now the other ways to bring up the Transform box is to go to the Image drop-down menu, Transform, and if you choose this top one, it will be inclusive of these other three. And so um, we're just going to hit that and you can see that it has brought up the transform tool here. You can also bring up the transform tool by hitting control T on your keyboard. And I am finding in Photoshop Elements 6 that I am having to use control T uh, quite a bit more than I ever did in Photoshop Elements 3. The transform tool doesn't automatically come up um, in some instances. Um, for instance, when I'm nudging with my arrows, I uh, need to do a control T before I can nudge with my arrows. In Photoshop Elements 3, it was much uh, easier to uh, get that transform tool up without actually um, hitting control T. So I'm going to hit Control T, and we're going to look up here at the um, at the bar at the top, and you'll see there are three different ways to resize or um, move your uh, photos. The first one is rotate. The second one is scale, and the third one is skew. So if I wanted to click on rotate, it in essence is going to activate that curve, um, it, those curve arrows so that I can rotate just as we were doing uh, without clicking on it. If I hit the scale button, it's going to activate the arrows that go in and out that help me scale. If I 
unchecked constraint, that is like um, toggling between the shift, uh, holding down the shift key or not. Um, I can now change it to make these guys really skinny, uh, make them midgets if it's not constrained. If I click the constrain button or the and have it checked, it keeps it proportionate. I cannot make them uh, fat or skinny or short or tall. Um, in Photoshop Elements 3 and, and uh, many of the other versions, you just have to get to know your version. Um, you had to hold down the shift key to keep things constrained if you weren't going to be using the boxes up up at the top in, in the transform tool. You had to um, hold down the shift key when resizing to keep it constrained. In Photoshop Element 6, it's just the opposite. When you hold down the shift key, it will allow you to do things disproportionately. Um, the default in Photoshop Element 6 is just the opposite. You're still using the shift key to toggle, but um, it's uh, opposite the way it was before. Uh, it keeps things constrained automatically and you don't have to hold down the shift key. If you do hold down the shift key, you're able to uh, resize um, disproportionately. We're going to bring up the bounding box again and um, go to the rotate tool and you'll see it also has the uh, constraint box to uh, keep it proportionate or not. Um, going back to the scale button, if you wanted to resize something to exactly 50% you could highlight and manually type in those figures in that box there. That is what um, these boxes here are for. Um, you'll see that this scale also matches this scale and why they put it on there twice I don't know but clicking either one of them will activate that uh, tool. Now let's go do some fun things with the uh, skew tool. The skew tool will um, change things into funny shapes. You just have to reach out and begin playing with it. There are actually um, three main ways to skew things. Uh, the uh, uh, first way is, um, I have to keep bringing up that bounding box, is um, if you hold down the control key you will notice uh, that you can distort in any shape. I can do some pretty wild things. It lets you freely distort it in, in many shapes. This is the same as if you are pushing down the skew key and taking off the constrained proportions. Actually, that's not working very well. If I hold down my control key though, I can really get it in some strange positions. Okay, um, bring up my bounding box again, and here's the skew tool again, and you'll notice uh, if I keep the constrained proportions that it will keep these edges uh, the same size, but it doesn't necessarily keep it centered. I would have to uh, manually grab these and this line and move it with my mouse. If I want to um, keep that perspective automatically, I can, let's bring up that bounding box, seeing we have the skew tool, I can hold down um, Control Alt Shift and now when I resize, you'll see that it keeps the perspective. If I wanted to move this in so it looks like I'm standing closer to the river over here and the boys are farther away, 
you can see it's keeping the perspective uh, uh, exactly centered as I go in and out. And that is holding down Control, Shift, and Alt to get that to do that. Now to go back to Compare, if you just hold down Control, Shift, which is the um, same as just using the normal uh, skew tool and constraining it, and I grab the box, you can see it doesn't keep it centered. I have to click down on the line and manually move it. So um, using Control Shift Alt is uh, very helpful if you're just trying to um, keep uh, the perspective, uh, change the perspective in the layout um, exactly. And so um, want to go over uh, the uh, the keyboard tools one more time really quick the shift holding down the shift key is going to um, toggle between keeping a photo proportionate or not when um, resizing if you hold down the control key and drag it the corners you can resize in any uh, shape that you want. If you hold down the control shift keys together um, you can skew things but it doesn't skew things uh, in perspective. It does keep the edges together and sort of matching uh, but it doesn't keep things in perspective. If you hold down the Control Alt key and then Shift, it will um, resize and keep things centered in, in perspective. So I have one more thing to show you in the bounding box. It's really fun. Is this reference point um, location right up here? Um, right up here in the corner. I'm learning how to draw circles as I as I film uh, today. You'll see that the default is to have it centered. This means that when I grab my rotate tool and I rotate, it's going to pivot right here on this circle in the middle of uh, the photo. If I change that by clicking on this box, and now that you'll see the solid color boxes in the corner, and you'll notice on my photo that instead of having that um, square box with a circle in it in the middle, that box is now here in this corner. Watch what happens when I rotate. It's going to pivot on that corner. And this is really good um, to use if you want to um, rotate photos and then stick a brad or something up there so it looks like it's hanging from that brad. Um, let's uh, change the um, perspective again. Let's do this uh, bottom corner and you'll see now when I rotate it pivots on the bottom corner. And you can also do the edges, this entire edge over here now actually right here in this middle and so when I rotate it's like it's got a little thumbtack sticking there and um, when I move the photo it it rotates uh, right along that edge so there are a lot of fun ways to rotate and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and, and learned a lot from it and if you have any questions certainly ask and one of the best ways to learn how to use these tools is just to jump in and play and so um, I just invite you to have fun playing.